Oh yeah, uh, so this is the next video, I think it's video nine. Um, so it's the 25th of, of June. Um, and I'm just picking up from the last video where I said I'd just gone in, we found out the baby was okay. Um, and uh, yeah, went over to Bex, cuddled her, said hello to the midwife. I was crying my eyes out. And so, and I think I made Bex and the midwife both cry as well. Uh, <clears throat> and I don't, I don't remember the initial engagement, but very shortly after, in came um, the head of midwifery. Um, this a tall woman who had a number of staff with her, and uh, she <clears throat> she was very straight talking. So she, you know, she knew that that the baby was okay. Um, but she was, she then basically said to Bex, well, um, if you want th this child out now, today, the baby will be out, we will take the baby out today. Um, <clears throat> what they, what, and, and Bex was like, no, I don't want the, 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 the day I lost my daughter to be the day my son's born. Actually, I want as far away from as possible. I was actually concerned for Bex the rest of that evening. Well, the rest of that day and then evening and night was don't go into labour, don't go into labour, um, <clears throat> uh, which she didn't. But um, yeah, um, so she wanted the baby to have you know his own birthday, um, and uh, the, the 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 head of midwifery again I can't remember her name, but she said like well in these situations sometimes people just want a baby to hold. She sort of. And Bex was like, it doesn't, I'm fine, you know, don't worry about that. Um, and uh, and then the midwife said, uh, and I'm I need to know that you can take care of yourself and this child until it's born. You know, she like needed to be convinced of that. So she, she was talking to Bex a little bit, but she was very nice about it, but like she was all business. Like she it was, you know, she cared about the well being of the baby, the well being of Bex, and she didn't mince her words in doing so. Um and uh, yeah, it just, it was surprising because I, I don't know that I've ever, <clears throat> um, unless it's been like an emergency C-section or something, which you hear of, but I don't know that I've ever heard of someone, uh, like a midwife saying, oh, we'll just get that, we'll get that thing out, we'll get that baby out now. Um, so yeah, that, that, that conversation happened and, and then th that, that small group of people left, uh, left me, Bex, and and the, and the midwife, and we were just talking, and and so I feel I actually feel sorry for this midwife because I was I was like crying and talking through my tears, and and so it was like um, loads of thoughts rushed into my head that hadn't been there before. So first of all, it was like making sure Emily was okay, which obviously she wasn't, but that was like all I cared about. Um, and then it was then once we knew she she we, we was dead we had to tell people and and but then also focus was on is the baby okay when Bex explained that so it was like I had a def something definitive to focus on and at that point maybe that was the first time I didn't have anything definitive to focus on so loads of different thoughts entered my head and this poor midwife took the brunt of it um, so I was asking her question after question after question and. Uh, and I was apologising as I was doing. I said, "I know it's probably not your expertise, but blah, blah, blah. and and she was she was fantastic. She listened to all everything I was saying. Bex was asking questions as well, but not not as many. Um, um, but yeah, it, it, I I don't know if Bex experienced the same thing at the same time for the same reasons. But I think yeah, it was just a it was like a, a moment where." There was just so much to all of a sudden talk about and to discover and find out and and uh, and the one thing I was extremely concerned about because we didn't know what had, so at this point we didn't know what had killed Emily and um, <clears throat> the day before which I'll talk about in the next video actually I do want to go through exactly what happened the day before which I haven't done yet uh, one of the things we did the day before I took Emily swimming I used to take her swimming to a swimming lesson every week me and her it was like a bonding thing it was brilliant she loved it. I loved it, um, and uh, I'd done that with her that morning, um, and there were other children there that sort of same age as Emily grew, <laughs> grew up with her. They 
three months old when they started and they were 19, 20 months old, around that range, you know. So, you know, got to, got to see them grow up uh, to, that, to that point. <clears throat> and um, and I was really, I, I just thought, did they, you know, is there something there that, that either Emily caught or Emily's left there that these kids may have picked up as well and, and you know, that they may, may, they, they may get affected by it. Uh, so I was saying, look, would, would, would this be a problem? Is this, is this, you know, do we need to tell these people? And, um, you know, the other parents and everything. And, uh, and she was like, first, I remember, first of all, she said, no, no, that's, it should be fine. And then she said, I don't know, I don't know. And then she went and took me to a group of doctors that were sat on that corner that I was explaining where the detectives were, uh, on a row of computers. And again, through, I was trying to compose myself. She just said, can you ask them what you asked me? And I just sort of explained myself again. And again, their first reaction was, no, 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 it'll be fine. And then they said, no, no, we're going to check. Um, it turns out that that, went, that information went all the way back to the, uh, the paediatric doctor, the one that had previously met with Bex and I 30 minutes earlier to pronounce Emily dead. Um, and he, he then spent a good couple of hours researching it to just, to just to make sure, just to be 100% certain. And, and Charlotte did it as well. They were doing it together just to be 100% certain that, that everything was okay. Because they were doing initial tests that they, um, on Emily's, some of Emily's fluids um, that, that, I don't know, gave them triggers and keys that they could have used. But yeah, um, <clears throat> that, was, um, that was where our sort of minds went, went next. Um, is there anything? Something popped into me as I was talking, and I can't remember it now. But yeah, that we did. The, oh yeah, that was it. So while we were in there, um, uh, that's I think I was going to say out of all that, but I'll, I'll tell you the wrong. So while we were in there, my mum came in, and my sister, um, my sister's uh, girlfriend, fiance, um, and that was just like. Oh, it was it was awful. Yeah, mum was just in bits, and and uh, I like cuddled her, and I was just apologising. So I kept apologising to people. Um, and the bit I was going to talk about, which I'll go into more detail about in the next video, is that um, Charlotte then came in with like a memory box, this box thing that she'd mentioned earlier. Um, and what I might do is in the next video I actually have the box with me, so you guys can see it. Um, but uh, yeah, that sort of that that all happened around that time. Um, so I'm going to end this one there, so I'm going to keep this one short, but um, yeah, next time I pick up I'll be talking about, um, sort of, I'll probably go, go through quite a lot in the timeline because there was uh, there was a lot of things that happened in quick succession after this point that don't really take a lot of explaining, um, as maybe some of the previous videos had. Alright, cheers.